All right, so I've been playing around in my studio with some samples again, um, making a remix, and I'm using a Queen track, um, good old fashioned lover boy, which is definitely a favorite of mine. Um, so I just kind of sat down, fucked around with it, and I kind of came up with something which doesn't really resemble the original track, but is still a lot of fun. Um, so let's have a look at it. So I've got a beat on the Digitact, <clears throat> and I've got some samples over here on the uh, the Octatrack. So let's run through some of these samples first. Um, I've just got the basic bit here. Which, you know, that's basically just the track, unaltered, just looping. Um, over a section, but I'm not really I'm not sure how I'm gonna use this little bit yet I feel like maybe I'll only use it sparingly as a kind of like Almost like an acknowledgement that this is the track I'm using um, But I've got this bit And they're kind of the two parts of the track I've used. The rest of it is just a mishmash of other bits and pieces which I've added. So I've got this bit here, which is a really slowed down string sample, a very small chunk of it um, just being looped and stretched heavily. Um, and I've got some uh, interesting uh, what do you call it, scenes running on this um, to change the pitch of it. So we end up with this effect. That's a fun thing I like to do on the Octa track is you can almost, um, you can set up uh, patterns in which you basically have, uh, you're changing chords and stuff using the crossfader. And I've got this sample over two different tracks and they're both slightly different. And when I change uh, through these scenes, um, it does different things. So like on this one, it changes up, uh, up four, but on this one it changes at minus three. So you get different chords happening basically across the two samples. Uh, it's a cool effect. And then I've got over here, this. Which is basically just, um, if I go in here. It's a, a synth sample and I just, uh, <laughs> just playing it in basically. Um, it's a, it's a cool sound, I like that. So I've also got one more, and it's one that I added last, and it's this kick track. Um, um, which is just a kick drum, 909 kick drum, which I'm affecting in various different ways. So that's pretty cool. Um, I do have a MIDI track going as well. Um, which is running the System 1M, and it sounds like this. Which, you know, as you can hear, is just an arpeggio. Um, and I'm using some of the interesting oscillators uh, options on the System 1M. I think there's both maybe set to FM. Um, I can't remember exactly. Maybe one's on like a sync oscillator or something, but they're both being affected by an envelope and it just kind of sounds cool. Um, if I go to the chromatic mode on here. You can sort of hear a bit more of that. But um, over there on the Digitact, I created a beat for this and I'm pretty damn happy with this beat and I might bring out all of the stuff. I might just take out everything from the Octatrack so you can just hear this beat. Um, so let's go with that. So 
So, you know, it's fairly simple, sort of four to the floor kind of deal. Um, but I'll just run through what I've got going. For the kick drum, I've got two different sounds making it up. So I've got this little sound and this sound. And on the first kick drum, this one, um, <clears throat> got some interesting filtering going on. I've got the high pass filter active with a little bit of envelope and a short, uh, a short decay. And I've got the LFO very subtly altering the filter frequency. So you get a shift in the, the boominess, I guess you might say, of the kick drum every time it hits, which is a nice variation, I think. Um, and together they sound pretty good. And I've got this other sort of kick drum tuned, kind of gives it a nice rhythmic quality. Um, and then I've got this, just a basic hi-hat with a really short decay. I also brought in some of these, some melodic content over here. But I'm not really sure where I'm gonna add that because it doesn't really jive with the rest of the mel melodic stuff happening on the Octatrack. So I'll, when I bring that into the computer, I'll, I'll adjust how I feel about that and maybe you know insert it somewhere but for the moment I'm just going to leave it muted and I've got this one more bit over here which has a lot of um, parameter locks going on it um, and it's a good example of how much you can mangle a sample and bend it to your will on the Digitact because I've got, um, the way I've set it up is I've got uh, this sample. Oh shit, hang on a sec. Where am I? So, <laughs> it's kind of hard to, hard to show you. Maybe I have to go to a different track to show you. But the sample is, where is it? Sample is this. Would you believe? But I have set it to an extremely short length and I've got it looping. So I mean, it basically just doesn't even sound like the same thing at all. And I've also tuned it. Um, and there's lots of filtering and other things happening across the parameter locks. And I've got an LFO affecting the uh, amp volume and the speed is being adjusted. along with the bitrate reduction on certain parts. So, you know, it's an interesting, cool effect. And, you know, the whole pattern, as you heard before, sounds like this. If we bring in some elements of the Octatrack, I think we can start to build something nice.
So that's kind of that. That's all I'm going to do. Um, I just wanted to show you that because I thought it was kind of rad. Uh, <laughs> if a bit messy and all over the place. But, um, you know, I'm having fun with it, seeing what's happening. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'll post it now and uh, you can watch it and you can tell me what you think. And I'll see you later. Bye.